Hello, I'm Mark Johnson, and today we're going to talk about market steer evaluation. Market steer evaluation and the judging of market steer classes is very important to 4-H and FFA members who are interested in being successful in livestock judging competitions, as well as junior college and intercollegiate judging contestants. Today we're going to talk about what makes for an ideal type of steer in modern times, priority traits as we actually judge market steer classes, and as importantly, what factors these things are based on in modern times. As far as an ideal type of market steer, there are two primary things that influence what we base this on. The first thing is what type of beef animal is actually practical, efficient, and profitable to own. It relates a great deal to the animal's body type, structural base, and is a definite factor in what we consider an ideal type of market steer. The second factor influencing ideal type is what consumers demand in beef, the final product that comes from the carcass of a market steer. These two things have to be kept in balance with each other. We often find examples of beef cattle type that are very problem free to have in a pasture and own, but may lack with regard to the ultimate composition that we see and how good that beef product that they yield relates to consumer demand. And by that same token, we see certain biological types of beef animals whose composition is very desirable as far as meeting consumer demand, but their body type and structural base does not facilitate problem-free beef production. So it's really a balance of those two things that leads us to say that in, by today's standards, if we could get market steers that would finish out or reach their optimal compositional endpoint, between 13 to 1500 pounds of actual live weight and have at least 1.1 square inches of ribeye size for each 100 pounds of live weight. For example, a 1300 pound steer should have in a ballpark of a 14.3 ribeye or more just to be considered above an average degree of muscle and do this with approximately four tenths of an inch of external fat thickness those are falling into the parameters of what we consider ideal type. We also want the right kind of body type, the right kind of structural base, straightness of lines and equalization of body parts in modern steers in tandem with that composition and growth rate. Those are all the things that make for a very good kind of market steer. With regard to what consumers like in beef products, let's take some time to talk about the United States Department of Agriculture's grading system. There are two grades that get assigned to beef carcasses, a quality grade and a yield grade. They have different purposes, but they're both there to tell us how valuable a beef carcass should be in the marketplace. Concept of a quality grade tells us how tender, juicy, and flavorful a cut of cooked beef should be. Quality grades are based on the maturity of the carcass and as much as anything, the degree of marbling or intramuscular fat that we find in the ribeye or within the muscle of a beef carcass. Quality grades favor cattle that are younger and fatter in general. If we think of A maturity cattle, which are the maturity group that we're going to see in judging competitions, marbling is the primary driving factor behind getting into those higher quality grades like prime and choice, the quality grades that are going to be worth more money because consumers prefer beef that is going to have more quality or more tenderness, juiciness, and flavor when they cook it. The other concept or the other grade that gets assigned to beef carcasses is a yield grade. A yield grade is there to tell us about cutability. Yield grades range in value from one to five. Yield grades are based on the amount of muscularity and the amount of fat that we find in a beef carcass. Typically, more muscular, trimmer animals are going to be at an advantage as far as cutability. A yield grade of one indicates high cutability, so if a grader assigned a yield grade of one to a beef carcass, it is telling us that we're going to get a very high percentage of red meat versus a lower percentage of fat that comes from that carcass. By that same token, a yield grade of five, our worst yield grade, indicates low cutability, we are going to get a much smaller percentage of red meat and a higher percentage of fat that comes from that particular carcass.
as with many things in livestock judging, it is a balance of these two grades that we look for that makes for a good beef carcass. Obviously, if younger and fatter animals have the advantage in quality, and trimmer, more muscular animals have the advantage in cutability or yield grade, it is a balance of those two things that leads to the most carcass value in the end product. And so we like to think of this, if we can keep our yield grades below a three, or in the ballpark of twos and sometimes get down into the ones, in tandem with quality grades of choice or better, or meaning that we're up in the choice and prime quality grades, is that combination of grades that is going to yield to the most beef carcass value. In particular, what we like to avoid are as we fall too low in quality grades and get down into the select and standards, or if we get up into the upper half of the yield grade threes, or particularly yield grade fours and fives, represent a great deal of waste and inefficiency and not the kind of beef carcasses that, that we want to produce or consume. Here in a minute, we're gonna go out and look at some live steers, but before we do, I wanna talk about the three priority traits that we use to evaluate market steers. There's obviously a number of traits and things we can look at as we evaluate market steers or any other type of animal that we see in judging competitions. But I like to get back to big concepts and the three big priority traits that we discuss here at OSU that are of most significance as we judge and evaluate market steers are muscle, balance, and correctness of finish. Let's talk about muscle and correctness of finish first, what they are and what they tell us. Muscle, in general, it's the type of thing that more is better because muscle is what gonna become the meat that we consume from a beef carcass long term. We see muscle in the top line over the ribbon loin of a live market steer, back through the hip and quarter, as well as through the shoulder and forearm. In general, more muscularity, more shape, equates to positive things as we judge and evaluate market steers. The concept of finish is, when we address finish, we're talking about the degree of external cover that we see, or the type of fat that's in a beef animal just beneath their hide and, and lying above the muscle or bone. And so really, of the different types of fat that we can find in a live animal or beef carcass, this is the type that we can actually see best as we look at a live animal. We can do a very accurate job of evaluating to what degree of external cover we see on a live animal. And since that amount of external cover relates back to potential yield grades and potential quality grades, it's very important that we can evaluate it with some accuracy. We in general say that about four tenths of an inch of external cover on a market steer, as we handle them at their upper last rib, and again we'll look at where that is on a live steer here in a few minutes, but about four tenths of an inch of cover right there equates to the type of steers that have the potential to be in the range of yield grades that equate to the greatest value and in the range of quality grades that equate to the greatest value. We start to get steers a lot fatter than four tenths of an inch or a lot trimmer than four tenths of an inch and we suffer some consequences both ways with regard to either potential cutability or quality. The third priority trait that we discuss in judging market steers is the concept of balance. Earlier, we talked about ideal market steer type and what it's based on. As we think about our three priority traits in judging market steers, two of them, muscle and correctness of finish, equate to the carcass end of steer evaluation and what leads to a good beef carcass. The concept of balance, we take into account when we judge steers because it is our means by which to assess their body type or the degree of body volume they have, their structural base or how structurally sound or correct they are as they move around, their, the way that they blend together, their equalization of body parts, their straightness of lines, all these things relate back to the type and kind of animal and by evaluating balance it is our means by which to take into account does this animal represent the type that we know are going to be problem free and thereby the most profitable to own and have in production? So that third concept, probably the toughest to define without looking at some cattle, 
But again, the three priority traits as we judge market steers, muscle, a correct degree of finish, and balance.